Jackie Olive and I'm a medical student at Baylor College of Medicine and this weekend I'm going to be taking you with me to San Diego, California for the STS 55th annual meeting. So first I'm going to show you how I plan all of the talks at the STS annual meeting. I first downloaded the STS meetings app. I can actually select from the home screen from a bunch of different options that includes a list of all of the talks organized by time and topic. It's Saturday night and we just finished dinner. Now we're just making some final preparations to make some last minute adjustments to our schedule. I think it's very important for trainees to take advantage of these STS University courses that are offered through the STS every year. Do a different course every year and learn from the experts in the field on how best to do these uh, very uh, complicated and uh, rare surgeries um, to then know how to tailor that to your practice in the future. To share in a few minutes here some of the uh, potential opportunities that we can improve uh, and mitigate the effects of unconscious bias and implicit bias to be successful professionally and uh, uh, potentially save lives of patients who will be affected by it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the role of mentorship and sponsorship in that regard. My final thoughts are that you can overcome you know, overt and unconscious bias. We all need role models, mentors, and sponsors. When your opportunity comes, I think you have to create your vision, like execute your plan, and measure your success. But remember, it's a meritocracy. Effort without results is not enough. Effort without results is not enough. When you meet resistance or obstacles, you have to enlist the help of your mentors and your sponsors to navigate that maze. And if you need a coach, so be it to enhance your emotional intelligence to be successful. If you want to see more underrepresented minority students and faculty and leaders, you have to start early to ingrain this level of success and commitment to the future. So they'll end up like the women in this picture, who make up the core group of our faculty in Hopkins, and we're so proud of them because they are successful, bright, hardworking, accomplished women. So they've had navigated the maze and ultimately overcome the problems. So I could close with saying that if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together with peers and colleagues. And obviously you see that this school has been very successful in accomplishing these goals. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, we're about to hear from Dr. Higgins and get his perspective on what's been happening at the meeting and his thoughts on a few topics. So if we could match up the demands of our patients with the diversity of our workforce, we might be able to address some of these healthcare disparities. And so that's why I've been a champion for eliminating implicit bias and creating opportunities through mentorship programs. Um, because I think uh, as a role model, I see myself as somebody who might be able to influence a young person's interest in our field. And if I can positively influence that person, it will have an exponential effect. It won't just be one patient. That young person will go on to take care of hundreds of patients over their career, and they may save lives. I'm, uh, I'm Dr. Tom Wynn. I'm a cardiac surgeon in Houston, Texas. I'm the course director for SES University. As you can see here, we have all these simulations uh, for learning minimally invasive valve surgery, which we think is very, very important. The nice thing about simulation is that it really gives you a chance to practice, and probably more importantly, it gives you a chance to fail, to do really complex things and not practice on a, on a patient. Um, we have a phenomenal course. We have seven stations. We're going to how to do uh, minimally invasive mitral valve repair. Uh, with direct vision, we're going to have to do middle invasive mitral valve repair under thoroscopic vision. We're going to have to do middle invasive aortic valve replacement via right knee tube for economy, as well as via upper hemisternotomy. It's a great course, and um, we're really happy with the turnout. Come join us. I'm very happy to participate, and uh, we're able to teach uh, all the wide and active skill stations today uh, to the trainees as well as to the practicing surgeons. And also, we're able to show the different FDA approved devices, the uh, core, the uh, hook, uh, the Bolton, and the Sony, as well as uh, we're able to uh, show the intervascular sound catheter. 
Uh, thank you and it was a great, a great privilege to uh, be part participate at STS University. Thank you. A more broadly uh, defined goal is to let our members know that we are servant leaders, that we are here to serve their best interests and hopefully help them grow and develop as uh, practitioners uh, through the whole spectrum of their career. And so as a member organization, that's our number one focus. And I think that'll be a foundation of some of those initiatives that we talked about. So I'm excited about the opportunity, honored to have it uh, as, the first, as the first person of color to be in this role. Uh, I'm humbled by it, um, but uh, not daunted by the uh, opportunity and look forward to it. So I appreciate your uh, uh, taking the time to share uh, our vision for the future with us.